Good morning, Debs Cooper, Global Stressologist, here to say thank you for joining me. Today we are talking about tooting your own horn. Mm -hmm. So, what does tooting your own horn mean? Uh, let me know if you where you are in the world. I'd love to know where you are to let me know. That'd be cool. So, tooting your own horn. There's different levels of tooting your own horn. And I reference it in capitals and not in capitals. So there's one lot that I call cocky. So you're cocky and you know exactly where you're going and you're yeah, 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 yeah. And you know the ones. And then there's cocky. Now, the cocky in non-capitals is very different to the cocky rah, rah, rah. So I also call it certainty versus uh, a-wholeness or arrogance. So when you're certain, that's still in capitals, but when you're certain, you have a knowing and you have a calling inside you, and you're certain. You just know. You know, no, no. You know how this is going to go. You have absolute certainty, and there's nothing going to get in your way because you're certain. Now, certainty is different to arrogance, because arrogance is, is something that goes along the line of, I know more than you. I know more than that. I can do this for sure. This is not something for me. Blah, 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 blah. And we know people who have been arrogant, and we know people who have been certain. And if you look at you, yourself, there's moments when you've been arrogant to others, and when you've been certain. So the key is to toot your own horn, is to be about certain. Certainty. Assurance. And not the cocky, or the arrogance. So first... Who is the best promoter for you? So when we think about this, who is the best promoter who promotes you to the world? So for me, this is who. This is who the best promoter is for me because of who I am. And I'm the one who can go out there and be myself and that's who I am. So when we talk about that, uh, we talk about like a job interview. So a job interview, there's two things. There's the CV, uh, curriculum vitae, or the resume, and that gets you in the door. And then there's you, and you are the one who sells yourself to the people to take yourself over that line. So there's yourself, definitely the CV or the resume that's got you in the door, and that's tooting your own horn, definitely putting those uh, things down that you've achieved. But also it's the person that they want to take their business to the next level. So I was talking to a friend recently about this and we were talking about a dating app. And um, we were talking about being truthful in a dating app because if you're not truthful for a dating app, you meet people and they've still got their school photo and they're 35 years old. Mm, that's probably not that cool. Or they uh, have a photo that they've cropped their partner out in a wedding. And that was 20 years ago. Uh, so make sure that your photos for your dating app are real. Make sure the words you write about yourself are real. Make sure that what you're looking for, you're putting in there, is real. Because if you're looking for somebody who's um, fit physically and mentally, write that down, that's what you're looking for. But it has to be in alignment with who you are because uh, you have to be fit mentally and physically as well. If you're looking for somebody who's in a, to a particular sport or a business, write that down because those you're, it's a process of elimination. So you have to be truthful in who you are and what you want. And the same is for a website. And this just amuses me because people, they have the about me section on a website and there are so many people who don't tell the truth in a website. Like in your about section, in your bio section. I don't, personally, I don't understand how you can do that because you're going to get caught out. And I think that's the key to remember is you're always going to get caught out when you don't tell the truth down the track. It may not happen straight away, but you will get caught out in time if you don't tell the truth. So be aware of that. It's also actually whenever you do a bio, whenever you talk about yourself to someone, whenever you talk about yourself to your friends or your friends talk about you, it's got to be truthful because people do find out what you're like in the end. So transparency is definitely the key. Be transparent in what you do. 
The key here is also to know that not everyone will like you. And I'm going to say that again, not everyone will like you. And not everyone will dislike you. There are so many people that we just, we do things because we think that other people want us to do it so that they can like us. That's not true. Don't do things because you want other people to like you. Do things because it feels real and authentic and it just feels like it's for you. So be aware of that. So know that not everyone's going to like you. I've got my haters. I've got them. And that's their opinion on me. I've also got my lovers. They love me. That's okay. You're going to have an equal amount of both. You just don't necessarily know who they are or what they're saying about you because it's irrelevant. So you have to toot your own horn all the time. So when I talk about that, excuse me, I talk about calling your own shots. And when I say call your own shots, I'm talking about make decisions that are right for you. You have to make decisions that are right for you, not anyone else. Not um, your family, not your partner, not your boss, not your children, not your friends. You have to do what's best for you. We have these social invitations we, we get invited to and sometimes you don't want to go and it's totally okay. You have to make decisions that are best for you. All the time they have to be best decision for you. And when I think about that, uh, Dr. John Martini, who's uh, one of my favorite mentors, has a universal law that he's created and it's called Law of the Lesser Pisses. Who are you going to piss off the least? Is it going to be a family member? Is it going to be yourself? Because I personally know myself, I would rather peeve myself, uh, not peeve myself off, peeve other people off than peeve myself off. Because the more I peeve myself off, it's going to destroy a little bit of my soul. It's going to take a little bit away from me of who I am as a person. And I'm not going to live authentic to what's important to me. So you're better to peeve other people off than yourself. So when I think about this, I also think about um, guilt. Because this is this clearly comes up that I'm going to do something and it's going to upset my boss. Or it's going to upset my family. Or it's going to upset our financial situation or anything. And guilt plays a large role in our world. And we know when you carry guilt, it not only affects up here, but it affects all of this. It affects your body physically. If you're carrying a lot of guilt, you're carrying a lot of weight physically and mentally. You're carrying injuries and illnesses and it's just can destroy you. It can just really embed within you. So when I talk about guilt, you have to look at what that guilt is because we don't want you sick. We don't want you sick up here. We don't want you sick in here. We want you healthy and to be the best you can. So the key is to upset others over you. And I'm sure some people are now going, you can't upset others over you. You actually can because you have to live your life your way. So I know for myself, I don't want people unfulfilled in what they do and around me. I don't want to be around unfulfilled people. I don't want uh, people to be unfulfilled. I don't want to see them not happy in what they do. It's about being fulfilled in everything you do throughout life. So if you're going to do something that you think is upsetting to somebody else, it's wise to look at how does it serve them for you doing this action. So maybe it's um, taking a new job. Maybe it's around taking a new job this year. So how is it going to serve? And they're saying, we, we want you to sit where you are comfortably. We don't want that to happen. So how does it serve them that you're going to take that job? And then you're going to look at how does it serve you? And I'm not talking about one or two reasons. I'm talking about 5, 10, 15, until you can go, actually, this is an amazing opportunity for us. I'm going to take that opportunity up. So look at how does it serve that person and you will be more fulfilled in what you do and they will be more fulfilled in seeing you fulfilled. Does that make sense? Because we all want to see people fulfilled and happy and just within ourselves going, yes, this is it. So when we look at... Um, when we look at our past stories, our past stories have definitely held us back. 
So we go to our past stories that we go, oh, I can't do this because I've already left a job in the last six months, so I'm not going to be able to do another one. So we go, is this actually a story or has our mindset just keep going and going and going that it's going crazy in our mind that we're actually not seeing the bigger picture of this? So when that story gets repeated and repeated and repeated, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's, you, it's wise to go back to the first part of that story and see the essence of what it is and then look at it. How does it serve that person and how does it serve me? So people play a really important role in our lives. We know that. And I call them your social circle. So you must have a social circle around you that is transparent and open and honest to you about themselves and also about you. So when I talk about that, do they, um, do they pimp you up or pull you down? Do they actually lift you up with certain things? Do they suggest that you go to courses? Do they suggest that you uh, read this book? Do they suggest that you listen to debscooper.com? What do they do? Do they do those things or do they put you down with any suggestion you make? Now this is not, this is not, uh, well it's family and intimate partners, but it's also friends. So a social circle plays a large role in our world. So do they promote you? Do they talk about you to other people? Do they talk about the same stuff that they would do when you're around than they would if you weren't around? They can definitely do that for you, but I know the title of the subject is Tooting Your Own Horn. You actually have to toot your own horn. You have to make your own decisions for you. People can suggest things for you, absolutely, and I love hearing suggestions. I'm open to that, but it's up to you if you want to take it on board. So to tooting your own horn is about you and your certainty of who you are as a person, what you want to get in life, how to walk through life guilt-free. Guilt I'm not going to say be an a-hole, being guilt-free. Make decisions that are best for you, and those others will come on your boat because you are fulfilled in what you do. So, what are you going to do today that's tooting your own horn? What are you going to do today? So for me, I'm a global stressologist. I'm really good at what I do. I'm really good at what I do. I can dissolve your emotion like that. We don't have to go through past, we go through past stories very quickly and we let it go and you move on. That's what I'm great at. And that's what I'm here to tell you because I've just tooted my own horn. Now, did that make me feel uncomfortable? No, because I'm providing a service to you. Does that make you feel uncomfortable that you heard that? Let us know in the comments, what do you do that's tooting your own horn? What are you good at? Let us know. That's what we're here for. So thank you very much for listening to me. I appreciate you being on here. If you have any suggestions of what you'd like me to talk about uh, next time, let me know. Other than that, I'm over and out and I'm on to my next thing. I'm just taking my dog to the vet. Mm. So thank you everybody. Sending you much love. Toot your own horn today and let us know what you're good at. Thank you. Bye.